friends this video on motion in a plane part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com no more fear from exam topics which we'll cover in this lesson are as introduction scalars and vectors multiplication of vectors by real numbers addition and subtraction of vectors by graphical method resolution of vectors vector addition by analytical method motion in a plane motion in a plane with constant acceleration relative velocity in two dimensions projectile motion and uniform circular motion so let us start the chapter with a knowledge on scalars and vectors so what do you mean by a scalar and a vector so let us look at that first start with scalar what is a scalar quantity a quantity that is completely specified by its magnitude and has no direction that means any physical quantity i'll give you several examples hereafter so any physical quantity which you can think of that is completely described by its magnitude and has nothing to do with the direction is a scalar quantity so scalar quantity has only magnitude no direction one of the examples of a scalar quantity is speed when we talk of speed let us say i say that uh, a car is moving on the road at a speed of say 10 meter per second so when i say 10 meter per second this magnitude that is the value 10 itself describes the quantity speed it doesn't matter whether the car is moving in north direction south direction or east or west so the direction does not matter so speed is completely defined by its magnitude if i say that the speed of a car is 10 meter per second that means the number 10 itself describes speed completely on the other hand when i talk of a vector quantity it is a quantity that is completely specified by its magnitude and direction that means in order to completely describe a vector quantity you have to mention both the magnitude as well as the direction in this case let us take the example of velocity we all have studied what is speed what is velocity in our previous lessons right so now we are clear with what are they so when i talk of velocity now if i say that a car is moving with a velocity of 10 meter per second then that information would be incomplete why because i did not mention in which direction is the car moving so whenever i talk of velocity i need to mention its magnitude plus i need to mention the direction in which it is moving right so any quantity which is described only by magnitude is a scalar quantity on the other hand any quantity which is described by both magnitude and direction is a vector quantity now in this slide we will look at several physical quantities which we keep facing in our day to day life and we will classify them as scalar or vector so i will display a number of physical quantities here and now we will see each of these quantities fall in which category that is out of these quantities who is a scalar and who is a vector so let us take the first one distance so what is distance distance is a scalar quantity so we'll write it here because when i talk of distance it doesn't matter i mean suppose let us say i'll take examples and explain let us suppose that you are going from your home to your school now if i say that as you travel from your home to your school you cover a distance of 10 kilometers now even if i don't when i talk of distance it doesn't matter which path you took to reach your school all that matters is how much distance have you actually traveled that means it is independent of the path you followed it is independent of the direction you moved so distance is a scalar quantity the next is velocity just now we talked of velocity so velocity is definitely a vector quantity because velocity is complete only when we specify the direction next is energy energy is again a scalar quantity because energy has nothing to do with direction if you think of any simple example let us say if i say that uh, if you drink say any energy drink you can think of right if you drink that you will get say 10 joules of energy 
right so this energy is completely specified with its magnitude you don't need to mention any kind of direction i mean you cannot even think of relating any direction to energy right so energy is a scalar quantity next is speed which we again discussed in the previous slide so definitely speed is a scalar quantity charge charge is again a scalar quantity because charge has nothing to do with direction at all so charge again falls under scalar acceleration acceleration again falls under vector quantity why because when i talk of acceleration i need to mention the direction as well because acceleration is nothing but the rate of change of velocity right so velocity as we saw is a vector quantity so rate of change of velocity would also be a vector quantity correct now next is displacement displacement is again a vector quantity we have discussed in detail the the, the distinction between distance and displacement in our previous chapters right so what we had studied previously was distance is basically the total path which you travel between two points right you don't need to mention the direction but when i talk of displacement you need to mention the magnitude that means the distance which you have covered plus the direction in which you have moved see these three quantities are actually related displacement is a vector quantity so rate of change of displacement is velocity which is again a vector quantity rate of change of velocity is acceleration which is again a vector quantity time time again has nothing to do with direction so time falls under scalar quantity similarly for volume volume again has nothing to do with direction so volume and so is temperature so in this list we found that all these quantities are scalar quantities which can be completely described only by magnitude and direction plays no role whereas these quantities are vector quantities where you need to specify the direction without specifying the direction the information about the quantity is incomplete right now we will go ahead and we'll in this chapter basically we will focus more on the study of vectors because in scalars you don't have much to study you know all about scalar quantities but we will study in detail how do we handle or how do we deal with vector quantities so let us go ahead so we'll start from the basic representation of a scalar and a vector quantity here we'll see how do we represent a scalar quantity and how do we represent a vector quantity so let us see how do we represent a scalar a scalar quantity is represented like an ordinary number like how we represent any other number so that is how we will specify or represent a scalar quantity let us suppose we take the example of any scalar quantity say distance suppose if i say if i want to represent distance i represent it by a small d i say a distance of 10 kilometers so the magnitude since it is a scalar quantity so it is defined only by its magnitude which is represented by a number it is just like any other number right and this quantity is represented by any alphabetical letter but when it comes to a vector quantity since there are two things associated with it that is the magnitude as well as the direction so what we do a vector quantity is represented by an arrow placed over the letter to represent direction so this arrow will basically represent the direction so what about the magnitude the magnitude is as usual represented by number so let us suppose if i say that a is a vector so how do you know that this a is a vector you place an arrow over a so this arrow shows that this physical quantity is completely defined by both magnitude and direction so whenever you want to represent a vector quantity you put an arrow over the letter and when it comes to the magnitude the magnitude is again represented by a number let us suppose we take the vector quantity say velocity so velocity is represented with this arrow showing that it is a vector quantity now when i talk of velocity let us say a, an object has a velocity of 5 meter per second so the magnitude is represented by a number similarly if we talk of acceleration it is again represented by an arrow to indicate the direction and when we say it is 10 meter per second square so the magnitude is represented by a number so this is how we represent a vector quantity now diagrammatically or in diagrams how do we represent a vector quantity a straight line 
with an arrow. The arrow indicates the direction of the vector quantity. So normally by convention this end of the straight line or the arrow is referred as the head of the vector quantity and this end the end which ends in the arrow the end with the arrow rather is the tail of the vector quantity so this is the end head and this is the tail so whenever we deal with vectors in diagrams so in diagrammatically we refer this end as head and this head this end as tail of a vector so in this slide we saw how we represent a scalar quantity and a vector quantity thank you Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.